On the wall back there is a black panel, blinky yellow light. You see it? Yeah. There's a Quarnix battery behind it. Purplish box, green wires. To get into that watchtower, I definitely need it. How are we supposed to do that? Well, supposedly these bald bodies find you attractive, so maybe you can work out some sort of trade. You must be joking. No, I've really heard they find you attractive. Look, it's 20 feet up in the air, and it's in the middle of the most heavily guarded part of the prison. It's impossible to get up there without being seen. I got one plan, and that plan requires a freaking Quarnix battery, so figure it out! <gasps> can I get back to it? Thanks. Now, this is important. Once the battery is removed, everything is gonna slam into emergency mode. Once we have it, we gotta move quickly. So you definitely need to get that last. Or we could just get it first and improvise. I'll get the armband. Leg. Vin Diesel, how are you? Very good, thank you. I'm sure you've been asked this question a million times, but your Irish fans would love to know when Marvel rings you up and says, you're playing a tree, you've got three words, would you like to play this role? What goes through your mind? Click! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, well, I, I'll, I have to be honest uh, and say that when, when Kevin Feige called, he did preface it by saying it's the strangest film, Marvel, strangest character Marvel's ever attempted to put on film. I got to be, I've got to be honest and say that immediately I recognized a challenge very few actors in history would ever experience. Mm. It's, um, I've always loved what Andy Serkis has done with uh, the, the token characters. Um, but they have an extensive vocabulary. Yeah. This is not as well read as Token <laughs> uh, and as beloved as Token. It's a kind of more obscure comic uh, in the world of Marvel Comics. Um, but most importantly, it's a character who's limited to three monosyllabic words. And although he's saying so much more, um, those that are untrained to the nuances of his speech are oblivious to what he's saying and can only hear the repetition of his name. Uh, coming out of the screening, like everyone around me was arguing over who their favorite guardian was. It was like almost came to to, to fist fights, <laughs> but like it would come from both Marvel diehard fans and brand new fans, and everyone, everyone fell in love with Gru. Oh, wow. uh, how do, how does it feel to get that kind of fan reaction? It's it's. It's what all the years of committing to this trade and to this art is about. And when people can connect to that, it says something. It, it's, if you can connect to the spirit and the soul of, of Groot, that is a, a testament to, to the work in, in a beautiful way and a, and a beautiful accomplishment. Mm -hmm. and something to be very proud of. Um, I'm ecstatic about it. Um, it's a character that goes beyond our normal kind of judicial prejudices. It's, it's something that hits you right in, in your soul. And, and I, I see it most obvious in kids, and I see how kids just respond to the character so deeply and accept the character so deeply. They don't care that he is as re as repetitious as he is. Yeah. Uh, just one of the, the things I noticed was like he there's such a, an obvious parallel with the Iron Giant, which you also did the, the voice work on. Uh, he's this big potential weapon, but he's got a heart of gold. Was that a comparison you made yourself when you were playing on the role? Well, it's, it's what, one of the things that Kevin Feige talked to me about on the phone, and he said, um, you know, their thinking was uh, kind of based on the fact that they felt so much emotion from this 50-foot metal character I played in a 2D animation movie mm -hmm. 15 years ago. Um, you know, there's, there's a somewhat reoccurring theme with the characters I play. Um, 
They're usually a part of some kind of multicultural family, and they are usually very formidable uh, on the outside, only to protect an innocence on the inside. And I think both Iron Giant and, more importantly, Groot uh, represent that. Absolutely. Vin Diesel, it's been an absolute pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> It's a fake laugh. <laughs> it's real! Totally fake. I'm rude. Thank you. Oh.